Hello, partner agents. I will give it just a moment while we let our participants trickle in. Hope everybody's having a great day so far. I can't believe it's August. I don't know if anyone else is feeling that, but I keep still thinking it's July. The year is like flying by. I know my kids are like so sad that they only have one whole month left of summer. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I know I've started seeing back to school commercials already and I'm like, oh my gosh, that seems so soon, but there you go. Perfect. Um, well, it looks like our guests are here today. So I'd like to kick it off and officially welcome uh, to the 55 places and neighborhoods.com program town hall. Today is Wednesday, August 2nd. We're going to walk through some really important program updates, some great economic insight and strategies for what's working right now to continue to be successful in today's uh, current real estate market. So on that note, I'd like to uh, introduce your hosts for today. We have Chad Walker, the Vice President of Sales, and myself, Jennifer Grelitzer. So Chad is going to take it away. Yes, thanks, Jen. Hey, everyone. Uh, nice to see you all virtually uh, this summer, and I hope you're having a, a good start to your year and looking forward to a strong finish for the year. We're, we're really excited to um, get in front of you today. Uh, as many of you may have heard, we um, have been getting out on the road and we've been to Palm Springs, we've been to New Jersey, and we've been to Florida, and we have a few more uh, offsites scheduled here uh, coming up at the end of summer and in the fall. And we thought, you know, why wait to give uh, a little bit of the same information to all the partner agents that either weren't able to attend or maybe the destination was a little too far for you. So uh, excited to present to you today and uh, just want to kick it off with some company updates. So if you want to click through there. All right. The first thing I want to kick off is our vision. So uh, as every company uh, usually has a vision, I want to share this with you because um you know, our vision was written when the company was started by Bill uh, way back when, probably 2009, 2010, he wrote this, or not this one, but he wrote a version of the vision. And it was really big. It was really bold. Uh, the old vision stated about how we were going to be uh, the biggest real estate platform out there, that we were going to be the first company people thought of when they um, bought or sold a home. Um, and it was really bold and big. And we, uh, as an executive team, had an offsite in Austin in April. And we had a discussion about what our vision should be and what it should entail. And we came up with this new vision that I think is more in line with who we are as a company and what we're trying to achieve. And so I just wanted to share that vision with you today. So our vision is to be the foremost authority in helping people find neighborhoods, communities, and housing that match their desired lifestyle, budget, location, and living requirements. We provide thorough and informative websites, a team of customer service advisors, and expert local real estate agents who are committed to helping customers navigate the journey of discovering the next place to live their life to the fullest. And this just really felt like more of us that we're a, a lead generation platform and we're not a real estate platform and we're never going to be bigger than Zillow or Redfin. And we have really awesome customer service advocates behind us that are a part of our team. And then we have really great local experts like yourselves who joined us today. So just wanted to share that vision with you that we've updated that and that we're committed to it. And we hope you are as well. Um, and with that, I want to go into a little bit on the next slide of what our big focus has been on for the first half of 2023. And it's really about the customer journey. One thing we focused on as an executive team, that being our marketing team, our customer engagement team, and our sales team is who is our customer? What do we see them doing on the website? We can see how long someone comes and has a session on our website. We can see when they register for an account. We can actually time and see how, how, how long they stay on an area page or a city page or a property page and then bounce and leave. We can see um, levels of engagement throughout that journey. Um, and then of course we can see once they've requested service uh, and, and, and the lead goes over to you as a partner agent, we can see their intent there. And as they move through that, the different stages and huddle on that journey. And if you know they're saving properties, if they're saving communities and that type of stuff. So one of the biggest chunks I wanted to show you is um, this journey in the first three uh, bullet points here. So you guys are, are all part of number four where they're a sales qualified lead. They've requested uh, help from a real estate agent and they, they've decided that the website and the brand meets what they need and they're ready to start talking to an agent to view some properties or communities. 
And then hopefully they become a customer that closes and uh, becomes a, a, pen, a potential uh, refer for you. So what I really want to focus on, though, like I said, is those first three bullet points. And we've been as a company really looking at like, how can we engage them more on the front end of this before they get to a real estate agent? How can we get them along that journey to get them ready to have their financing ready, decide where they want to live, what communities are best that fit their lifestyle? And so... Um, what I'm going to show you in my next probably four or five slides and some of those things that we're doing, right? And, and part of this is we know that customers get over to you and a lead is created. And then you sometimes will say, hey, you know, they're not ready right now. The community wasn't a good fit. I, they were unresponsive. I couldn't get a hold of them. And so you archived them previously. And what that did is archiving them, put them back in our, our court, right? That put them back in that bucket three saying, okay, how do we nurture them further to get them along that journey? And so if you want to go to the next slide, the first thing I want to show you is um, a video. And we're doing these for all of our big uh, major metro areas. Um, we did a test here in Phoenix. Um, and I want to show you that video first. And we've, we, we've done uh, Arizona, California, where we worked on Florida markets. And then next, we're going to be doing the Northeast markets. Um, so Jen, if you want to play this, we'll... Um, uh, go ahead and let you see what the these fresh videos these will be on the landing pages for cities and area pages five places is the leading resource for active adults we specialize in 55 and over communities and can help you make the best choices for your retirement today we're going to discuss the benefits of retiring to central arizona this region includes the phoenix metro area as well as pinal and graham counties let's explore while you'll love the valley of the sun <laughs> Living in the Phoenix area can afford retirees some financial freedom. Arizona doesn't have Social Security income tax, gift tax, estate tax, or inheritance tax. And the low cost of living means families on a fixed income can look forward to a more secure future. Life in the desert has its perks. With 300 days of sunshine each year, Arizonans enjoy year-round hot weather with no humidity and very little rain. The Phoenix area and central Arizona are known for the desert, but it's also home to some of the best hiking in the country. Nearby mountains offer accessible hikes, trails, and even tubing in the Salt River. Closer to home, active adults can also take advantage of hundreds of golf courses, tennis courts, and swimming pools. Sunshine and year-round outdoor recreation come together to create a healthy, active lifestyle for retirees. But the climate also means relief for people living with asthma and allergies. Arizona is also home to the famed Mayo Clinic and other nationally recognized healthcare systems, leaving less worry for yourself and your family. Phoenix is the fifth largest city in the U.S., so locals have easy access to big city culture and nightlife. Those 55 and over can take in the Phoenix Art Museum, Chase Fields, famous restaurants, and boutique shopping just minutes away from home. We would love the opportunity to discuss sunny desert life in central Arizona with you. So give a local 55 Places community advisor a call today at 1-800-928-2055. All right. Thanks so much, Jen, for playing that. Um, it was a little bouncy on my end. It may have been on yours just because we had so many participants, but uh, uh, just wanted to say, uh, could you go back one screen actually, Jen, sorry. Just wanted to say, um, we, we tested this uh, in the Phoenix market with a subset of customers and um, the bounce rate went from people um, uh, on the site bouncing at 55% down to 31%. So they, what they did was they stayed on the site longer on that area city page. They dove deeper in the communities after watching this video. The time they spent on site, which is that TOS you see at the top there, was went from two, uh, just under three minutes uh, to almost six minutes there. So almost doubled the amount of time. And then the leads per day increased in that market when we tested this video by 27% compared to other markets. So just some stats there. We know that um, our marketing team is really focused because we know uh, uh, consumers really like videos. They like short videos. They like testimonials, um, which is why Jen is working on some of that stuff with you agents in the field right now. And so this is one of the many initiatives that we're um, making sure we put on our website to be able to add a little bit more value to the customer to help them really kind of decide, is this the right area and give them some, you know, high priority top nuggets of what uh, an area can offer. So just wanted to show that with you. Okay, I'm ready for the next one. All right. The next thing uh, we really worked on and looking at those three buckets, and I, I kind of mentioned this, was that whole archived. Uh, we looked at this uh, archive lead campaign back in April, 
And we were like, how many leads have we archived that are, um, you know, greater than 14 days, but less than 30? Can we email them and see if they're still interested, right? So we took all those leads that everyone archived and we sent an email out to 2,986 people. Of that, 1,076 six, uh, customers opened the email. And of those 1,076, 217 actually told us they were still interested. You see um, an example on here on the screen of um, those responses of why they were interested. And so one said, you know, it was a little too pricey in Port Charlotte, basically, but if they could find a condo that was cheaper, they may still be interested. One talked about, um, you know, fees associated with Carolina Lakes at Trilogy were too expensive, but if they could, you know, find something that met their interest in a short drive from their mountain cabin, that they'd still be interested. What this uh, kind of campaign and study did for us uh, internally is say, hey, we have some consumers out there, you know, we, we all know leads are a little bit slower right now this year, right? The market hasn't picked up uh, due to interest rates and inventory and all that stuff. All of us are real estate agents here on, on the webinar today. We know that um, maybe we what we need to do is dip back into the leads we already have. And that's what prompted us to do this. And we said, okay, us as a company, how can we nurture these folks for you and move them along their customer journey to get them back? into a status where they're actively maybe looking at the right community, are ready to purchase, have found the right fit. And so that's what has drove us down to um, change our approach to archived leads. And go ahead and go to the next, next screen. So in May, what, what you all noticed probably is your archived reasons kind of went away, right? You're like, oh my gosh, where did they go? Well, where they went is into this new bucket called nurture. And so all of the same reasons you're going to see that used to be an archived are now in the nurture. So we're looking at like bad contact info, can't afford, decided not to move, don't like the community or area, not age qualified, not interested. Other reason, they're a rental inquiry, they maybe have an agent or they're unresponsive. These are the ones we decided as a company, let's try and help engage them for you, nurture them for you and see if we can get them to respond, get the right contact info. See, you know, we saw some of the archived ones where someone was, you know, 52, 53, not quite 55, but we wanted to keep them, you know, really engaged with our website, get them attached to a blog or a newsletter, things like that. So you'll also see that the reason they have an agent on here, right? The reason we decided to nurture they have an agent is I'm sure many of you, like myself, I've I've got a customer from an agent before in my in my previous career when I was actively doing deals as an agent, where an agent set the customer to tour with me or to my open house. And you know, they said it had an agent. I didn't tell them how to disengage with their agent or how to end that relationship. But what I did do was blow them away with like my knowledge, what I knew about the market, what I knew about the area, what I knew about the homes. And then eventually I would sometimes win customers over. And so we decided to nurture people who have an agent just in case we can add more value than the agent they're currently working with. And they decide they do actually do want to work with us. So we're not going to cross any um, due diligence boundaries there or anything like that. Um, and so just wanted to uh, kind of note that. Uh, it's available to any buyer, sellers, and rentals. Um, they have to be in the attempted contact uh, before you can move this opportunity to nurture. And you should know as agents, they still stay attached to you as a relationship. We're not removing the agent relationship when you move them to the nurture bucket. If they reach back out to you, you can pull them back in a nurture as well. So we are going to nurture their, nurture them in tandem if you are as well in different ways and in different campaigns. And we're going to try to get them back into your pipeline. So we're really excited about this. We're seeing some really positive results come out of it where we're dipping back into the pool of customers we already have rather than just depending on new leads coming into the site and trying to get them to really engage. So we're pretty excited about this. And if you have more questions on this, I'll pause at the end of my presentation here in a moment try to answer any questions, but if not, your sales managers will be able to answer questions as well. So, and then we'll go to the next one. All right. I want to talk about some recent releases we've had. So uh, along that whole uh, nurturing and that customer journey of those first three buckets is we're trying, we need your help. We need to know that after you've made contact with someone, contact's been established and and you're logging that call in there in huddle, we want to know from you, what is their intent to move? What is their estimated time range if you know? Is it zero to three months, three to six, or six months more? We really want to know this because we want to try and help engage them for you and get them to sign up for blogs and newsletters and save searches and saved communities and really get them to try and engage with you. And if we see there's activity going on, we want to try to push it back to you and say, hey, you know, you may have noted this person was six months or more, but they just saved like three new communities this week. 
week. You should know what's going on there, right? So we're going to try out of this two-way street, but we need your help in telling us the level of intent. If you're having that initial conversation and you don't really know what their level intent is, I would default to six months or more and just leave it in that bucket if you're not really sure. If you, and if you haven't got to that point of the conversation yet, that's totally fine. Um, so that was one of our recent, um, recent releases. And then the next one is our customer engagement team. So people who call in from the website and go to our customer service team, they're as well going to share the engagement insights with you with what they learn. And so what you're seeing on the screen here is when you get a new lead sent over from a warm transfer from the customer service team, uh, they're going to be trying to share what they captured in their conversation, their time frame to tour, their time frame to move. Um, and things like that. Now, keep in mind, we all know that customers tell representatives one thing, they tell agents another thing. We're not saying it's always going to be true, but we're trying to tell you the best that we know uh, from our engaged conversation with them, what their level of intent is. So we've started sharing those notes with you as you receive new leads. So you've probably seen that come over. Okay. What's up next? Upcoming and new releases. I think this is my last slide and then I'll pause for questions on uh, company updates. So we all had heard about the bug that I think happened in mid-July where uh, texting wasn't working for new leads coming over, emails were. Uh, I think this went through yesterday, correct me if I'm wrong, Jen, but we have a Huddle app push notifications now where they're live and they're working for new inquiries, uh, pushing it to your phone. Uh, it should uh, immediately mitigate some of the text delivery issues that we saw happening in July, and it is working on iOS and Android. So if you're having any troubles with that, please reach out and let us know or file a ticket um, so that we can get to you and help you with that. But um, that is one release we had. The next two uh, are coming in August, and one is bulk emails and task logging in Huddle. We're pretty excited about this. What this does is allow you the ability to go in and based on opportunity type from a list um, in your huddle, you'll be able to send bulk emails to customers. So if you know new property top pops up in a community um, or something like that, and you feel like you want to email everybody that's in your zero to three month bucket, uh, you'll have an option to pick those customers, do a bulk email. It will email the customers from your personal email address. It'll look like it's coming from that. And it will look like it's individualized to each of those customers. So it's not going to be a general email that looks like, you know, you just emailed everyone. It will be personalized. And we're pretty excited about this. A lot of you probably do this in your current CRMs that you use with your brokerage, but we're giving you the option to be able to do this in Huddle as well, based on different stages and opportunity types there. So this was asked for by the agents and we want to deliver it. And then the next one is intelligently routing. I call this kind of 2.0. As everyone knows, we talked in our February town hall and some other initiatives throughout the spring season that um, you know, you're receiving your ranking reports of how you rank against other agents in your market. We're distributing leads based off those ranks monthly. Um, so that's already been rolling. Uh, this one is uh, an update where we're doing a second rollout of the agent routing service. That's what ARS stands for, which includes adding a placeholder lead in routing decision. And what it specifically does is creates a, a, a designated hold when a lead is requested that has been allocated but not yet submitted. So let's say someone's on the website and they saw your picture as an agent on the website and they're about to submit. But at the same time, the CE team received a call and you're the first one that's going to pop up on that, you know, warm transfer. What we're going to do is try not to send you two leads at the exact same time. So it messes up either your warm transfer success or your response rate. So what it is, is a 15 minute kind of hold to say, hey, we're actively working on sending this agent a lead. Let's not send them another one at the same time. This may be a little difficult, not true for single agent or two agent markets. Uh, you know, because there's not enough agents to rotate. So sometimes you may get back-to-back -back leads, but hey, in this market, maybe that's not a bad thing, right? Uh, but we're excited about this. We're rolling this out just to um, uh, update and make our system work better on sending leads your way. And with that, I did not look at chat or anything. Uh, let me see QA. Do we have any questions in here? Looks like Jen already answered them. Are we good? Should I keep rolling? I'll pause again at questions at the end of this one. All right, let me kick off this section with a disclaimer. I am not an economist. Uh, I do follow many economists. I do follow real estate trends very closely. Um, I'm kind of a data geek when it comes to this kind of stuff and, and seeing what the market does. I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that follow this as well. The next few slides I'm going to show you is actually um, a set of slides that I didn't create. It's from NAR, National, National Association of Realtors. It's from their economist. 
and just kind of want to go over kind of trends. And, you know, if you want to put in Q&A in chat or anything you're seeing that's working or not working or anything um, that you want to add to with what's going on in your markets, that would be great. So just kind of want to show you year over year. The left side is, um, uh, you know, inventory month over month, what we're seeing. And then the right, I'm sorry, the left side is sales. The right side is inventory. So on the left side, this is what we're seeing with um, just overall sales happening. Year over year, we're down uh, in sales nationally, 22.4%. It also breaks it down by region there, Northeast, Midwest, South, and the US. Uh, the biggest um, uh, market that's down in overall sales year over year from April to April is the West at 31%, which is definitely feeling the heat, no pun intended with all the heat. Uh, and then on the right is the inventory, right? Is you can see over time, month over month, it hasn't changed that much, right? So really uh, a, a healthy market of inventory, they say, is usually four to five months of inventory. That means the number of active buyers and number of active homes on the market is pretty balanced. Um, Right now, we're still in a seller's market is what this says with the low inventory. And so I think I hear a lot of people say, oh, my gosh, this market's so crazy. And it's, you know, um, you know, it's 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 a bubble. It's going to do what it did last time 10 years ago. And no economist or analyst uh, thinks that is the case. Um, I think a lot of consumers are pretty scared by headlines they see in the news. Uh, we have to do our best as agents to probably control that message. But what this really shows you is it's still a seller's market. The number of homes out there is still not up compared to the number of buyers we have. And so supply and demand is making it still pretty competitive in most markets because of that low inventory. All right, next slide. Uh, here's a just a kind of uh, chart that shows you inventory of existing home sales uh, uh, for existing and new homes. On the left, it's existing. You can see that it's actually dropped down quite a bit from its peak in about 2008. Um, and then on the right, you can see new homes have actually gone up quite a bit. So we're probably seeing more new builds out there, more new communities in our um, demographic of customer base and homes that are for sale. And so just kind of want to show you what those trends look like. All right, next slide. Um, here's the same kind of view of total homes for sale. The new is the blue, the existing is the kind of salmon colored there. Um, and this is kind of uh, a prediction of what they think might happen going into 2024 as well. Uh, so uh, it looks like the inventory will stay pretty low through 2023 as what they predict and that it might creep up in 2024. Most of, us think, most of us think, and if you've been reading any articles that that's driven by rates, there's a lot of home sellers that have a very low rate and don't want to trade in their current home for a new one uh, just to pay more or the same for a different home. And so they're holding on to them, right? So there's a standoff between Buyers don't want to pay for the rate. Sellers don't want to give up their low rate, right? And so that's probably what we're seeing here. All right, next slide. And uh, this is just history of uh, the Federal Reserve raising rates, right? So you can see for 2020 to 2021, really early 2022, unheard of low rates. Those were your two, 3% ranges that we hadn't really historically ever seen. And then you can see starting in March, how the rates started to rise. So the feds raised the rates every meeting for 10 meetings in a row. This last June, uh, uh, two months ago, they finally, for the first time, paused and didn't raise rates. In July, they just raised another quarter percent. Um, and so they're doing this to um, fight inflation, fight you know job reports and all that kind of stuff. And most people predict this pattern will continue until about Q4. And then the feds may start to pull down rates going into 2024, which will help increase inventory, maybe bring more buyers to the table. So this is just a trend of what the feds have been doing with rates. All right, I think this is the last slide. This is the prediction I was just telling you where they think rates will stay pretty high um, above that 6% there. I know they're almost at 7% right now, um, but then in 2024, we could see them start creeping down. I will say too, I read an article yesterday, both on, um, I wrote read one online and I saw Redfin published one as well. They're pretty good with their data that, um, you know, most, they think that most people will start to move uh, both sellers and buyers get back into the game of real estate and the housing market will be a little more healthy if rates get closer to 5%. So you should really watch every time the feds meet what's happening with those rates. If they start to lower them and then, you know, banks and lenders start to lower those interest rates as well, it may be a good sign that you're going to have more sellers come to the plate to maybe want to list with you or more buyers be more ready to actually purchase. So they think that's going to start happening in 2024. And most of the trends are showing that. All right, that was my attempt at giving you kind of a all up economy update. Again, I'll pause for questions before turning it over to Jen. 
Did we get any more? All right. I'm so good. No questions. That's awesome. I'm just kidding. Jen, take it away. Have to find the unmute button. Thank <laughs> you, Chad. Great job. And I really feel like your insight is so helpful to our partner agent team as they communicate with the opportunities uh, we send their way. Uh, so before I get into the fun stuff, I just wanted to talk about some program operations to keep things running along smoothly for you. So some quick reminders with summer vacation in full swing, just a reminder to use the calendar tab in huddle. You can click schedule time off and that way you could pause inquiries for your vacation or for any other needs. Um, you could do this up to four weeks in advance. So if you have an October vacation coming up, you're not gonna be able to schedule that until early September. Uh, one caveat, if you are the lone ranger, a single agent in the market, uh, you could pause, you could go through this process. Leads are still going to flow through to you. You can address them upon your return. And the benefit to using the out of office functionality in Huddle is that it's going to pull those leads out of your performance metrics. So it's not going to count response time for those. It's not going to count um, those metrics towards your performance, um, which should give you a sense of relief. You could rest and relax on your vacation. Uh, we recently unveiled Next Best Agent Lead Routing. This is going to direct leads to nearby agents in the event that there's no available agents in the market. This is going to be a really great benefit to customers. They're not going to have to wait for an agent to return to call them. Uh, it's only going to work if the markets are nearby each other, right? We're not going to send a lead um, to New Jersey if they're inquiring about New York. It's going to work, um, for an example, if you know New Jersey, uh, if the agent in Sussex County is away and the agent in Bergen County is available, we will route that lead to that agent so they can serve the needs of the customer. In the meantime, we just ask if you get a lead that's for a nearby market and not your own. I know it might be confusing or startling. Why did I get that? Yes, it was meant for you. So we simply just ask that you call the lead and see how you can assist them. If they're looking for help that's beyond the scope that you can provide, let us know. But at a, at a first stop, just give them a ring. If a lead requests to be connected with an agent in another area, you can use the lead reassignment form, which I'll demonstrate for you momentarily we ask that you put a zip code in that's actually required because it is an automated process. So if you put in uh, the zip code 12345 or all zeros, uh, we're not going to know where to send that lead. So um, just do a quick Google search, find the zip code for that area and pop that into Huddle. That way we can ensure the lead gets to the correct agent. And last public service announcement, if you change brokerages, which I know some of you may be thinking about as we head towards the second half of the year, just let your sales manager know in advance. We are completely happy to follow you wherever you go. Um, so let us know and we'll maintain confidentiality while you make that decision. You will need an updated referral agreement in place in order for us to continue to send leads. So definitely communicate that to us. Here is where to find the opportunity assignment request option in Huddle. It's You have to click the drop down arrow to find it and then be sure to select if it's a listing or a buyer-based referral. All right, uh, this is not the most fun subject, but I'd like to talk about the elephant in the room br very briefly. We have a team that is in charge of finding unreported transactions. This is a check and balance in our business and most businesses have checks and balances in place. Why do we do this as a company? We are investing literally millions of dollars to direct traffic to our websites that convert, convert into leads that you can help sell homes and increase your business. Having a really thorough and effective transaction identification process is going to help us keep that revenue rolling in and allow us to reinvest in sending leads your way. What we're finding right now is an average of one unreported transaction per 1,000 leads. 
Um, so I want to help you. I'm an advocate for the agent. I want to help you avoid these issues. So here are just some tips what I recommend um, to stay organized right in your business. And I do want to say when this happens, um, we don't assume that it was an intentional by any way. We know you're a completely busy real estate professional. We have many partners that have been in the program literally years. It can happen where you forget the source of that inquiry. So do yourself a pay favor in your day-to-day -day business, every sale you make, cross-reference huddle to ensure uh, if it came from 55 places or not. That way you're going to have peace of mind that you're not going to find something down the road. We respect your relationships. And if you have a relationship with a customer that predates the inquiry on our site, let us know and we will be happy to waive the fee on that. We are going to ask though for documented proof. So a screenshot of a call log, a text message, an email within 90 days prior to the inquiry is what will satisfy um, the clause in that agreement. I recommend checking your referral agreement for clarification and feel free to reach out to me if you need anything further. Um, as an asterisk, we don't consider mass marketing um, suffice for constituting a prior relationship. You could farm a neighborhood of a thousand homes. And if somebody goes to our website, right, instead of calling you directly, we will consider that um, an inquiry through our site. All right, let's move on to the fun stuff. Um, I want to spend some time today recognizing the stellar performance of our agents. Uh, even as challenging as the market has been, and as Chad demonstrated, with 22% less transactions going on this year than last year, we are still having agents in the program be wildly successful, and I want to recognize them here today in this public forum. So first up is the agents who are knocking it out of the park in terms of meeting with our opportunities. As you know, you're never going to sell to somebody that you don't meet, whether in person or face to, uh, in virtual, a virtual forum. You have to be meeting with your leads. That is the one behavior that absolutely translates to future sales. And take a look at these agents. They are uh, 20%, 18%, 17%. And they're not just limited to one state or one market. We have agents all across the country um, that have adopted a really well thought out appointment processes. And these appointments are leading to sales, in fact. Next up is agents who have made the most sales in the past 90 days. It's incredible. We have Christina Thomas out of Florida. She's actually based in central Florida, seven sales. That's more than two sales per month in the last 90 days. We have Rick Bennon in Nevada, Mary Ellen in New Jersey, Kim Kirkman in Florida. We have some Texas all-stars, Kelly Katzis. Uh, the list goes on and on, all different states, a wide representation of really successful agents in our program. It can be you um, with the right processes. You don't have to live in Florida or New Jersey or a hot spot retirement destination to be successful in our program. These are the agents with the highest 180 day conversion rate in the program. We're only displaying agents that have received at least 30 leads in a 180 day period. Uh, really impressive. Mary Bustani, seven, over 7% in Indiana, and Mary Ellen, the last six months in New Jersey, over 6%. Why do we look at conversion rate in a 180 day period? First off, um, about 65% of our sales come from leads that inquired in six months or less. Uh, to drill that down even further, about 50% of our sales each and every month come from leads that inquired in 90 days or less. So we know that there should absolutely be conversion from our leads in a 180-day period. What we also know is that there are a lot of leads that do take longer. And especially now in this market, it may take somebody a little bit longer to find a home we absolutely understand that. We absolutely understand people take one, two, three, four years. Um, we will take a sale any day it comes. We're just looking at, in a short term, what is an agent doing with our leads in a specific cohort? 
challenge yourself um, to get to above 0% and see what you could do. And I want to conclude this segment by just thanking you for being so completely awesome. We invest heavily in finding the best agents out there and have so much gratitude that you've really been resilient through a lot of change, been adaptable through different markets, and have continued to serve the customer first and foremost. So thank you for being our partner, for being awesome. We appreciate each and every one of you. Some quick national statistics. Uh, people want to know, how do I compare to those around me? On a national level, we're at a 1.39% for 180-day conversion rate. By no means are we expecting a 10%. For partners who have been with us for many, many years, um, on a 12-month rolling conversion basis, we used to... Um, ask agents to try to get to 10%, we would take into consideration sales um, from any cohort or any time period. We are looking again at that short 180 day cohort and I say make your goal 2%. So like men in black, erase, get that mind eraser, erase 10%, really make it your goal to get to 2% and beyond. Um, that's where we're trying to get our national average at this point in time. And uh, for a 90 day appointment rate, what we're seeing across the country is 5%. I say, don't stop there, um, aim to get to 10%, meet with one out of 10 of your inquiries. That's what's gonna help you. That's the single most important behavior that's gonna help you get to a strong, solid conversion rate. And I get questions like this. I think we saw one in the chat previously about moving stages. So how we track appointments is not necessarily task related, it's stage related. So make sure that you're clicking at the top, the bar at the top, this is new, you wanna to click to attempt to contact, right? When you go through the new lead sequence, when you connect with somebody, you wanna click contact establish, you have to be sure to click save for these stage changes to take effect. Appointment set and appointment completed, when it's highlighted like this, that's how you know it's accurately reflected in your system. I know, I understand that you guys are so busy and that doing data probably isn't the most exciting thing that you have to do. When you're organized with these opportunities in the CRM, that's going to help you continue to move them through the sales process and make sure that nobody falls through the cracks. So I say invest 30, 60 minutes a day, do it in the mornings, make sure your leads are accurately updated. That's going to help you, um, again, result in more sales. So some fun facts here. Right now, uh, about 44% of our partners are meeting with 5% or more of their opportunities and our top 10% of agents are achieving a 10% appointment rate. Uh, so these are numbers that we are fully committed to improving and we wanna be a supportive partner in you meeting with our leads. Because again, we know that that's one of the first steps to build, building a great solid foundation with a client who will ultimately transact. So next, uh, next slide here, um, we're gonna move into training content and support. If you guys don't mind, I will answer questions at the end of my presentation here today. Um, so yeah, let's dive into this. I am thrilled to launch a partner agent YouTube channel. This is something that I have tremendous gratitude for the sales managers and for Jen Baldwin, who has edited these videos and uploaded them. You know, we are committed to supporting you and we want to make it as easy as possible to retrieve information that you need. So right now um, in this YouTube channel is really short and sweet, as you can see, like one or two minutes specific huddle skills what we will be coming out with is short and sweet training videos, inspiring videos, and even videos or content of things that you can use in your own marketing and share and um, things that are going to help establish you in your own personal brand. So look out um, for this. We're going to post it in the Facebook group later. We're going to send emails about it, um, but really excited to provide our partner agent team with a more robust content and training platform. So this is a text heavy slide and no pressure to read it. 
This is actually a script, a video script that I compiled a couple days ago that I will be sending out to our partner agent team. We feel that video is one of the best ways to connect with your clients, especially online inquiries, people that are total strangers, they don't know you, you must be doing video. This is going to help build relationships with your opportunities. People are going to get a sense of who you are and how you work just by seeing your face on a video. So our job is to make it easy for you. We're going to be creating uh, scripts a couple times a month that you can use in your own marketing as a means of supporting your conversion. So the next video I'm going to show uh, is short and sweet, is how to take this script and put it in an online teleprompter so that you can make a video uh, seamlessly and easily. Hi, partner agents. This brief video is going to walk you through how to take the scripts that we provide you with, pop them into an online teleprompter, and use them to create really great videos that you could push out to your clients via email, on your social channels, or even texting them in a one-off way. Uh, so let's get to it. We're going to start here and type in teleprompter. It wants to take my words here. Okay, teleprompter online. I've used QPrompter in the past, so I'm going to stick with that for today. Feel free to play around and try one that you like. By the way, I know this website looks like it's from 1995 here. So you could type in your script or simply cut and paste it, which is what I'm going to do. The settings in place work for me, so I'm not going to make any changes to the font size or the width of the prompter. And then I'm just going to simply click Start New Prompter. So now when you're making a video, you're not going to share your screen. I'm sharing a screen today just for demonstration purposes only. You may just want your beautiful face with your background. One thing to consider here is the speed at, at which the prompter operates. I'm going to try a speed of 10 and see how that goes. Um, if you talk fast, you might want to increase it, uh, but we'll just see how speed number 10 goes for today. And one more thing, practice makes progress. This might be a little bit uncomfortable at first, but I guarantee you the more you do it, the easier and it will become and the more confident it will be for you. So here we go. Hey everyone, it's Realtor Jen. So as a well-educated consumer, you may be aware of the current low inventory situation in the real estate market. This could potentially make it challenging for you to find a dream home, and it might leave you feeling a little frustrated or even fearful. However, it's important to remember that there are still plenty of opportunities out there. In this video today, I'm going to discuss how I can help you navigate this market, remove fear, and get you moving into your next home. For sake of time, Hi, partner I'm agents, just going to play the uh, whole video. Um, I could send it later because I have a lot of content to go through. Um, but I hope you find that helpful. And I think it's really easy and just jump in and get started making these videos. I want to spend a few minutes talking about what is working right now to sell homes in 2023. The first thing is to get comfortable conducting an informative buyer's consultation. In June, I hosted a webinar about how to do a virtual buyer's consultation. I would refer back to that. I think doing one virtual in person, it doesn't matter. I think that you have a well thought out process does. Why is this important? This allows you to gain a better sense of what your customer is looking for and it also allows you to educate them on the process and really what to expect in today's market. If you think about other service professionals, doctors, attorneys, financial advisors, they don't just jump in, send their clients retainer agreements and get to work. They invest time, like an hour at least, in a consultative process. What I find, and actually what one of our agents, Carolyn, asked me last week is if our company has a position on the NAR lawsuit that's going on right now. If you're not familiar with that, there is um, a class action lawsuit against some big box realtor uh, brokerages 
and the National, National Association of Realtors about how commissions are divided, right? How sellers are currently paying for both sides of uh, the deal, so to say. How, we don't know what's going to happen, right? Nobody knows what the, the resolution of that case will be, but how can you prepare for change? How can you be ahead of that curve? If you're a buyer and you have to articulate your value and why your buyer client should pay you a commission to find their home, you better have a really good buyer's consultation in plan and be able to talk about the buyer agency agreement. Don't wait for change. Don't wait for that to happen have a really robust, informative buyer's consultation process in place right now. That's going to help you, uh, regardless if there's change or not, it's going to help you make a better connection with your customer. I highly encourage you to do this. I was listening to a podcast this morning. I had to create this slide. Um, it's so impactful. It relates to real estate really well. A confused mind always says no. And think about that your buyers are probably hesitating because of fear, because of the unknown. Remove fear, do a consultative process and give them education. That's going to help them have more confidence when navigating this process. So number two, I recommend getting social, especially on the platform LinkedIn. I actually think it's underrated and I, I don't think realtors are using it nearly enough as they should. Um, you are a total stranger to your online buyers when they inquire with you and you call them and you send them emails. They're going to Google you. What do they see when they Google you? Is your LinkedIn profile collecting dust? Do you have your brokerage not updated? You have three brokers ago it's time to invest in your LinkedIn profile. Make sure your broker is accurate. Make sure your headshot, at least start with by having one, but make sure it's recent and be active, be engaging, post things on there. If you don't want to friend your clients on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, if that's not your thing, maybe you don't want them to see you with a martini in a photo on a Friday. LinkedIn is a very professional network. It's a great forum for connecting with your clients. It's a great way to connect with them without always being super salesy. Um, and if you Google Bill Ness, I had fun with this. LinkedIn is the first thing that shows up. So play around. It's either going to be your brokerage website, uh, Zillow or LinkedIn. Those are going to be the top three things that you see when you Google yourself, hopefully. Take stock in LinkedIn and make sure you have a really robust built out profile. And last but not least, I know we have uh, about 15 more minutes to go. I wanted to talk about having a really effective discovery process. This um, should be number one because it, I think it starts with that first phone call and really asking great questions of your clients. Um, I'm going to skip some slides for the sake of time, um, but I had a little humorous uh, analogy between how someone would approach online dating. Do we approach uh, conversations with our leads in a very forward way, potentially? I want to play with you a recording, um, a, a customer service recording that we feel has, um, it's a standout framework. If you're going to represent, uh, replicate how you interact with a lead from the start, let this be your guide, let this be your framework. I'm going to play it for the next seven minutes. Hello. Is this Carl? Yes. Hi. Hello, my name is Lauren Marcatella. I'm a local realtor in Charleston. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. So I hear that you're interested in Dell Web K and K. Is that correct? Yes. So now, where are you calling from? Somerville. Oh, so you are a local? Yes. Okay, well, how long have you been in the area? Uh, 25 years. Oh, okay, so you're really <laughs> familiar with our area. <laughs> yes. Fantastic. What have you looking at that Web Team Bay? I just, my wife and I are retired, and um, we're uh, basically on a two story. Uh, split level kind of home and we're just okay. tired of all the handling of 
in stuff in a house and we just want to get out and meet and greet have fun with people around our age um so <laughs> Well, the 55 community is the best way to do that. Yeah. Yeah, living where we live is not anybody around here our age. So that's... Where are you guys currently? Carriage Lane. Okay, gotcha. Um, So did something draw you specifically to Del Webb Cane Bay, or are you interested in all of the 55 plus communities in Somerville? No, right now, just that one. Um, Like I said, this is preliminary to start. We're... We're um, want to get some things put in motion to see where we're going to go with all this, and and that's sure. kind of where we're at. Okay, well, great. So Del Webb Cane Bay, it started back in 2007. It is one of our more mature communities, meaning that they are only pre-owned homes in there. They are no longer yeah. doing any new construction. They finished it in 2017 with just over um, 1,000 homes, actually 1,017 homes in there. Um, and your HOA is going to be around um, 310 a month. Um, and that's going to include your cable, all your lawn care, your amenities. There's an indoor-outdoor pool, pickleball course, tennis course, bocce ball, all of the clubs that you could possibly imagine and want <laughs> for community. Mm-hmm. Now, what, was there a specific property that you saw that you were interested in or just the community as a whole? Um, my wife has been looking. Uh, I know there's like seven listings in there. We, we're, there was a, we're just kind of looking. Like I said, okay. I'm, we're not ready to push the button on anything because we own a home. Understandable. And, okay. You know, we got a lot of things we got to put in place, but we wanted to do a preliminary meeting. Um, I know there's one in there that's about 1,600 square feet because we want to we want to downsize as much as possible. Okay. Okay. And um, uh, but again, it's all preliminary. I don't want to uh, jump the gun. We just want to make sure we do the thing, do it the right way, so that we take care of ourselves. Yeah. Totally understandable. You want to make a wise investment um, in your retirement years. That is completely understandable. Do you have any idea about what price point you want to stay around? Well, or have you not really looked into that quite yet? No, we we've looked at that. Um, I, I think a lot of it's going to depend on what we list and what we get for our home sure. here in Cares Lane. Um, yep. I know they I know they start around three hundred twenty and go up so uh again the the smaller size the 1600 square foot two bedroom two bathroom kind of situation we could start at we could look at other things but i can't really tell you a price range until i get all my financials in in order sure completely understandable now are you guys working with a realtor yet uh, listing your home no we haven't again this is preliminary that's why we wanted to go out there we haven't done anything now. Sure. The main reason I ask that is because I don't want to step on any realtor's toes if you are already working with one. Um, I'm an independent real estate agent, meaning that I would represent you guys. And if you already had someone representing you, I obviously wouldn't want to cross that line um, ethically. So that's why I ask that question. No, we don't have a realtor. Okay. Okay, great. Well, is there a time that you guys are interested in exploring Del Webb Cane Bay? I was looking to see, and I don't know how the weather is going to be, but I didn't know what the availability of this Saturday would be. Yeah, so actually, it looks like, would you be possibly available next Wednesday, the 12th? No, we couldn't. Um, we got okay. several appointments next Wednesday. Well, um, how about Thursday the 6th? Is that a possibility for you? Oh, I'm sorry. That would be uh, tomorrow. Go ahead. Well, we keep we keep our granddaughter on on thir- Mondays th- or Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Um, okay. For the remainder of the granddaughter. Day. She's one and a half. Oh, how fun. <laughs> I have two girls. They're a little bit older than yeah. that, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, actually, this Saturday, I am out of town. However, I work on a team with um, my dad, actually. 
And I can see mm -hmm. if he has any clients in town on Saturday and if he could show you around. Um, uh, would that be that something would be that would be interesting? Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm, yeah. Well, perfect. Let me, I'll reach out to him and I'll give you a call back and see if we can line that up. If he doesn't have clients, I don't think it would be an issue. Let me make sure that I have your phone number right to reach you. Is it 843-209-3699? Is that yes. correct? Yes. Okay, perfect. Well, I will give you a call here um, in a little bit once I'm able to connect with him, and we'll see if we can get you guys touring around Delta's Team Bay this weekend. All right, thank you. You're welcome. I'll talk to you soon. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. So I don't know what you guys heard, but what I heard in that conversation, by the way, is the word preliminary about seven times and things such as get my financial ducks in a row and I'm not ready to push the button. Um, but what I could tell you is that phone call resulted in a contract in 14 days and um, over the price that this person sort of indicated, right? They said they didn't really have a price range at this point because their ducks weren't in order, but um, that they wanted something on the smaller size. They spent um, about like $165,000 more than he initially indicated in that phone call. Um, so what do we take from this, right? Number one, you can't judge a book by its cover. When you're connecting with somebody for the first time, they're not always gonna be forthcoming with information and they're gonna say, it's a sales psychology. They're gonna say they're just looking, they're preliminary, they're not ready. This agent really handled all those objections so well, and she kept forging through with her consistent questions and asked for the appointment because she knows just meeting someone face-to-face, -face, you're going to really get a better sense of how you can move someone along through the process. Um, so her questions, um, what has you looking at Dell Webb Came Bay, Came Bay? That's a great question to ask. It's not, why are you moving? that maybe might make somebody a little defensive or you're going to kind of get a superficial answer. Oh, we're downsizing, but what has you looking at such and such community? It's a great way. I also thought she knew her stuff. I mean, she said how many homes there were down to the exact answer, 1,017. When you're the expert in your communities and you can convey that, you're going to convey confidence to that buyer. They're going to be wanting to work with you. Um, so use this conversation as a great framework um, to help you make that connection with your leads. When you could do great discovery, that's the first step in the process. Um, so yeah, that's that concludes my presentation to today. Um, we could send you out the slides. I know they were a little bit rushed because uh, we had so much great content. But I wanted to open up uh, the conversation if you guys have a few more minutes for discussion, for questions. Is there anything that Chad and I can answer for you today that we haven't so far yet? By the way, someone may have the same exact question as you, so go ahead and feel free to pop it in the chat. All righty, well, quiet bunch. We're gonna go once, go twice. Um, I think at this point, we're all set. So Chad and I appreciate you carving out one hour for us and thank you tremendously for your efforts in serving our customers and your partnership. Thank you, partners.